I remember my biggest problem with crochet when I first started was I hated how thick the fabric was and how dense the stitches were, and it just didn't make a piece that laid well. That is until I figured out what I wanna share with you today. Well, hello there, and welcome to episode eight of Be Hooked TV. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super thrilled about this topic. I'm so grateful that somebody in the community suggested this video. We haven't covered it before, and I am excited to dive in because I was thinking back and realizing that, yeah, that was a really big problem for me when I first started to learn how to crochet, and even well through the first year or so that I crocheted, I never knew what hook size to choose for my projects. And you might be thinking, well, just follow your pattern. I didn't know how to read a pattern. It was a huge problem for me. I didn't have anyone to help me and I just gave up on that, but I didn't give up on crochet. So that's honestly how I started de designing. I didn't know how to read a pattern, so I just made my own things. Well, that meant I had to figure out what hook size to use for my project and it was a struggle. I often would start projects, get halfway through them and realize that it wasn't hanging right or it was too thick or any number of problems. And I really wanna help you avoid that because through trial and error, through learning some things, I was able to figure out just some general guidelines for figuring out what hook size you need to use for your projects. Now to help me with this, I wanna say a big thank you to Lion Brain for sponsoring this season of Be Hooked TV. I'll be demonstrating today with their Color Made Easy Yarn. And let me tell you, this is my new favorite go-to for a bulky weight yarn. Now of all of its qualities, I really, really like the ply of this particular yarn because it has great stitch definition. We talked about that a couple episodes ago and that's just basically your ability to see the stitch pattern. It's nice and thick. It's a bulky weight number five, so your projects will work up really fast. And there's a nice loft to this yarn. It's really soft and squishy, and so your resulting fabric is going to be soft and squishy as well. Other really great qualities about this yarn is that it's washable and dryable. Thank you, Lion Brand, for making so many washable and dryable yarns because you can work up a project in this that you're going to wear, that you might sweat in or that you might get dirty, you can throw it in the washer and the dryer and not have to worry about all of that work just going down the drain. So that's really great about this yarn. It's also 100% acrylic yarn. It also stays intact, so you won't see a whole lot of pilling or fuzzing or fraying with this yarn in your projects. And it's just an all around really good yarn. So what I'll do is have a link in the video description below where you can check out Color Made Easy. You can see all those yummy fall colors and potentially order some for your next project. If you do that through that link, of course, it's a big, big help to the show. So I wanna say thank you so much for all of you who are using that link. It really does help me. It helps Lion Brand, of course, and it helps you because you have a great yarn for your project. So when you're thinking about choosing the right hook or needle, by the way, this is all applicable for knitting as well. The first thing you'll need to do is consider the drape that you're going for. And if you've never heard that word, drape is really just how something flows on on your body, how the, how the fabric itself flows. So this sweater that I'm wearing is super light. It's not stiff, it's not thick, it's not bulky. It just has a nice drape. So consider the drape of your project. Are you looking for something that's a little more dense or thick or stiff? Or opposite of that, are you looking for a fabric that is sort of like this, that's thinner, that has a nice drape that's going to flow? And some considerations for making that decision is really just keeping the project in mind. So I like to use a stiffer yarn or a thicker yarn or a thicker stitch pattern for projects that need to be more rigid. Think about a crocheted basket, for example. When you make up a basket, you're putting things in there. You don't want it to just collapse. You need it to be a little bit thicker. And so you would use a yarn hook combination that will give you a more dense and a more thick or durable fabric. On the flip side, if you're looking to crochet a sweater, you don't want it to be like a really stiff box on your body that's maybe making you look a little bit bigger or is a little less flattering. So in those situations, you would use a yarn hook combination that promote a more flowy or an airy drape. 
So if the answer is you want a stiff or a dense fabric, think smaller, okay? I'll explain that a little bit more as we get going, but for now, think if you want dense, thick, durable fabric, think smaller. Or if you're looking for a flexible, airy, flowy, however you wanna describe it, type of fabric, think bigger. Okay, so you've got those two fundamentals right now. You know what fabric you're looking for and you're thinking either smaller or bigger based on the type of fabric you want to create for your project. Once I have that all figured out, the next thing I like to do is refer to the yarn band to give me a general reference for my starting point. So if you look at the back of any yarn band, you'll find a little picture that has a crochet hook on it. It'll give you a gauge, but it'll give you the size of that crochet hook as well. Now, just through experience, I've come to realize that that recommendation, the gauge that results from what you see on your yarn band is really right smack in the middle. It's not like as dense as you could make that yarn, and it's not as loose or airy that you could make that yarn either. So I really like to use that as my starting point. So for example, Color Made Easy has six and a half millimeter hook that you can use to obtain the gauge that you see listed there. So that's my happy medium, six and a half millimeters. Now, if you're looking to use Color Made Easy and you want something like a basket that's really sturdy, and so you're looking for a dense, rigid fabric, go to a smaller hook size than six and a half. So opposite of that, if you're looking to use Color Made Easy yarn for a cardigan, you want it to be nice and flowy and airy and just sort of hang real nice, then you'll use a bigger hook size than six and a half millimeter. Now keep in mind that these are really just guidelines. People's crochet style is a factor in this. I, for example, know that I crochet quite a bit tighter than the average person. So I take that into consideration as I am planning out my hooks and my hook selection for projects. So now the question becomes, what hook size do I choose? I know it needs to be smaller or I know it needs to be bigger, but there are a lot of options that are smaller or bigger than what's recommended on your yarn band. And the answer to that is in the swatch. Now you may not want to hear this because I know it's not always fun to create swatches, but you can save yourself a lot of time. Now I will also say that you don't really need to make a full swatch in order to do what you need to do to figure out the drape. Now I'm always going to encourage you to make your swatch, especially if you're going rogue and you're creating your pattern on your own, you're creating your project on your own without a pattern, you need a gauge swatch and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on that soapbox today. So I want you to swatch, but if you're really, really strapped for time and you just can't possibly make a swatch, you can get by by working just a few stitches and a few rows in your stitch pattern to get a feel for whether or not it's going to be the right drape. And that might very well be the right answer for when you're really just trying to figure things out, like your first instinct on that hook size, work up a few rows, work up a few stitches, and you'll know pretty right away if it's gonna be the right selection or not. If you decide that it is, perhaps you continue making that swatch and you take your measurements and you do all the right things in order to make sure that project goes successfully, but only after you have realized that that is the right hook selection. So as a general rule of thumb, I like to drop down at least two hook sizes from my recommendation just as a starting point. So for Color Made Easy recommending a six and a half millimeter hook as a starting point, I wouldn't consider anything other than a five and a half. And that's what I would choose to start out with first. Now things get a little bit more confusing when you're recommending a six and a half because two hook sizes or one full millimeter up from that would be seven and a half millimeter, which doesn't exist. It's not an actual hook. You can find a seven millimeter in some hook sets. I've got a couple here, but really two sizes up from six and a half. I like to start with eight millimeter because that catches the seven and a half and then the eight is the second. So let's look at the scenario now where you have chosen a hook size. You've worked up a few stitches and a few rows and you know that you need it to be a little bit more dense. From that point, I just drop down a single hook size. So I might go from a five and a half to a five millimeter, give that a try, work up a few more stitches, see if it's given me the right effect. 
If I feel like it's right, I'll work up a little bit more in that swatch and use that to determine whether or not this is the right hook selection. Now a half a hook size or a half a millimeter up one hook size doesn't really seem like a whole lot, but it can make a pretty big difference in the grand scheme of your project, especially across multiple rows and multiple stitches. So the name of the game here, honestly, is just to keep adjusting until you get the drape that you want for your project. And I know this is not a really interesting part of the entire process, but it is a really necessary one because I know it's really frustrating to work through a pattern to get halfway done and realize that it's too stiff or that it's not stiff enough and things just go wrong because you didn't take the extra time. The good thing though is that you'll get used to different yarns. As you work with more yarns and you get a feel for how they work up with different hook sizes, take note of these. You can actually write them down so it'll help you to remember. Or if there's just a particular yarn that you really, really like to work with and you go to it all the time, you'll get to the point where you won't really have to guess too much anymore because you know your crochet style, you know the yarn, and you know how that yarn works with the hook to create whatever type of drape you want. So once you have an ideal hook size for your yarn, the next thing to consider is your stitch pattern. Now maybe you've already played around with this a little bit as you were trying to figure out what the right hook size was, but I really just wanted to highlight it because your stitch pattern will play a role in the overall selection sometimes. Now one particular stitch that works up thicker than just a standard stitch alone is your post stitches. So front post double crochet, front post back post double crochet, for example, creates a thicker fabric than just a plain double crochet does. And the thickness of that will play into the drape. The thicker it is, the less drape it's going to have, the more stiff it's going to be. So that's what I do in order to figure out the right hook and the right yarn combination for my projects. Now I would love to know what your tips are for choosing the right hook or the right needle size for your project. Go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. I know that'll help a lot of people in the community. It'll help me. I always enjoy reading through your tips as well because I can learn from you. So if you take a moment to do that today, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And also don't forget to check the video description below for a link to Color Made Easy Yarn if you wanna try this for your next project. It's really fun. It's just a great yarn that I'm really into this season. I'm looking forward to making a lot more projects with this yarn and it's definitely something to consider when you're planning out any fall projects. One of the great things about this yarn of course is that you can achieve a thick fabric. You can also achieve a drapey fabric and so that's why it's super versatile and perfect for our demonstration today. All right, that'll wrap up this week's episode of Be Hooks TV. Thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the show so we can hang out every single week like this. And I also want to encourage you to consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. We do a lot of fun stuff here on this YouTube channel, including Be Hooks TV, including Saturday tutorials and full project tutorials. And if you're subscribed, you'll have access to all of that and you'll know when a brand new video is published. So thank you so much for that, and I'll see you next week.